afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Big News Radio Channel. We've got breaking news from Frederick's Broadway Entertainment closure from last night. You should stick around for this kind of news because it is very important. Listen closely. <clears throat> William Afton was found dead inside the entertainment building while trying to climb into one of the Springlock suits which malfunctioned. Many people have theorized that this could have been an act of suicide or probably just a faulty problem within the Springlock suit's anatomy. But for now, people are unsure as to what happened to him. Nevertheless, we are glad that he is finally gone. Nobody should have been harmed by this man in the first place. However, three victims were also found dead. The three victims were Charlie Emily, Cassidy, and a local police officer named Simon Walton. Simon Walton's body was discovered in a parts and service room with his decapitated head on the floor. Charlie and Cassidy's bodies were also discovered in the exact area where William Afton died. Their bodies were stuffed and crammed into the puppet animatronic together as one. Such a tragedy! <laughs> on the bright side, the Fredericks Broadway Entertainment will be reopening soon with a couple of new improvements to the establishment. He's not done just yet. We interrupt your daily scheduled program for a very important announcement from Frederick's Broadway Entertainment. Hey kids, do you like fun? Yeah! Hey parents, do you want your children to be more protected from any strangers that can do serious harm to them? Okay! Then come on down to Frederick's Broadway Entertainment. It's the perfect place to have fun. We got amazing stuff such as entertainment, games, activities, and food, security and safety, and so much more exciting things. So what are you waiting for? Come on down to Frederick's Broadway Entertainment, where fantasy and fun never ends. Frederick and the gang will be looking forward to your arrival. <coughs> Frederick's Broadway Entertainment is not responsible for vandalism, injuries, choking hazards, toilet hazards. It's been too long, way too long after 33 years. My past life used to be very simple and fun. My owner would play fetch with me in the backyard, catching the frisbee, taking me to the beach along with his wife and children, giving me trees, and even letting me play with the other pets too. <sighs> that was until he decided it would be funny to run me over like a roadkill and hide my body away inside of this suit. Every time, whenever I close my eyes, I always dream of the same scenario over and over and over again. It still haunts me. <laughs> what matters the most is that he finally got what he deserved after all of those years of torment. None of those innocent victims deserve to die for the sake of his sickening entertainment. But, if he ever does come back and try to mess with anyone else again, he's going to feel nothing more but pain and revenge. Huh? Is that... Who could that be? And why are they coming here at this time of night? Hmm, must be the new guy I presume. Hello? Are you there? Has he picked up the phone yet? Oh good, you actually did. <clears throat> um, 
Welcome to your first night shift job as a security guard here at Frederick's Broadway Entertainment. I assume that you watched the commercial from the company that played on your TV, and then you decided to apply for your job here because from what I've heard about you, you used to work at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Juniors as an employee ever since the early 80s. <laughs> Man, you must really miss the good old days when things used to be simple, don't you? <clears throat> Anyways, enough about that. Let's go through the things on what to do when working as a security guard. Huh? It's just only three things written down. <clears throat> so, first of all, you must always keep an eye on the building by using the ISAC security bot, just in case if any suspicious activity happens. Second, if anything hostile attempts to enter into the security office, press the alarm button to activate the building alarms to scare them off. And finally, make sure to turn on the hallway lights by pressing the light buttons located on the left and right wall. This is important because you never know what could be hiding in the darkness. And that's basically it. Good luck in your first night, Jeremy Fitzgerald. You'll hear more from me for the next night. Bye!
just... No, no, no. I'm sorry that I stalled you there. You must be the new guy that I saw walk into this building a few hours ago. I think I heard that your name was Jeremy, I presume? Anyway, I'm Sparky. Sparky the dog. And look, I really need your help now. A certain someone has been tampering with the animatronics now. I'll explain more on what's going on as time comes. Just for now, meet me back in the office tomorrow. Okay, I'll see you soon. Huh? Oh, you're back! <clears throat> Anyways, great work on your first night. I told you it wouldn't be so hard. Even though you seem to have a little bit of trouble sleeping from all that working on a Monday night. <sighs> Can I really blame you at all? Nah, it's that typical Monday feeling that hits you hard. But thank God it's Tuesday now. So, uh, remember when I told you about the three tips on how to successfully survive on your first night as a security guard? Well, I just found out while flipping through the journal okay. book. Okay. I've noticed that. that your ISAC security bot isn't fully functional to perfection. <laughs> um, so, yeah, apparently the ISAC security bot has some several flaws to its programming. Yeah, I, I know ISAC sounds like a very strange name for a security bot, but we're getting off topic here. Anyways, I think the second night should play exactly out the same like the first night. However, like I said before, ISAC does have some problems that might okay. screw you over if something right. that happens. While ISAC's camera quality can be very low, you should also be aware that it can crash when it's exposed to loud, high-pitched sound frequencies. <laughs> Imagine using an unfinished bot that crashes easily to loud sounds. <laughs> That's all I had to say. Good luck on your second night, Jeremy Fitzgerald. I'll see you Wednesday night. Hey, Jeremy, welcome back. You seem to know it's how I'm in your office now. Well, let me explain that. You see, Frederick and Cora are going to be active at the same time tonight. And since your alarm has a cool down, if both are at your doors, you are definitely screwed. And that's why I'm here. You can use me as a blockage just in case you need to recharge your alarm. Hopefully I can save your butt in the times where things get really hectic. I think my friends are starting to move around while I'm talking, so let's just focus on the night, shall we? Okay, I'll go to the left. Okay, I'll go to the left. Okay, I'll go to the left. Okay, I'll go to the left.
Wait, what? Excuse me? Wait. So you're telling me that Cora the Elderly Turtle and Sparky the Dog are not on the stages anymore? Where are they? Surely they couldn't have just walked off by themselves. What do you mean you don't know where they are? Come on, you guys. Surely you're smarter than me to know exactly where they are! <sighs> Look, I'm, I'm sorry. I just acted like a jerk towards you guys, but surely there must be any sort of video footage that was recorded from last night. Mm-hmm. Huh? What do you want now? Jerry Fitzgerald is on the phone right now, and he wants to speak with you. Oh, crap, I forgot. Thanks for reminding me about that. Uh, I'll speak with you guys again when I'm done talking with Jeremy Fitzgerald. Yoink! Hey, where's my thank you, you dumb snitch? Whew. Hey, Jeremy. What's up, my dude? I just wanted to say congrats on surviving your second night. Woo! Great job, man. Uh, anyways, aside from that, you're probably wondering what's been happening while I was speaking with a couple of employees and, uh, well, I don't want you to become panicked, and neither do I. If you haven't heard by now, both Cora and Sparky went missing and haven't been seen on their stages during the daytime. We tried looking everywhere for them. The parts and service room, the kitchen, the boys' bathroom, the girls' bathroom, the security office, and we even tried looking in the ventilation system located in both the boys' and girls' bathroom. But they're still nowhere to be found. We couldn't even find, like, any evidence. No footprints, no robotic parts dropped on the floor. How could they just disappear? Ugh, that shouldn't be possible. I just need a little break right now. Hey, Jeremy, you will not be hearing from me on Thursday night, but again, I'm not making any promises here. That might change if I'm feeling a way better. All I can say is, good luck on your third night. You're gonna need it. Huh? What is it this time? You've actually found a recorded video footage? Located on the PC's desktop folder? Hell yeah! About damn time! We might actually get some clues on what the hell is going on right now. Anyways, I gotta go, Jeremy Fitzgerald. Bye! Okay, I can explain why me and Cora were gone from stages during the daytime. You see, there is a secret part in this building that you and the others don't know about. I'll try and show you what it is when the time comes. Just, for now, I need to be quiet. You don't know if he is listening on us while we're doing this. And for Cora, well... I saw Mr. Apple drag Cora down into the secret area after you left yesterday. And now, she's a jumbled mess of parts. Look. I can sense some near around right now. I think it's time that we need to focus on surviving right now instead of planning.
Okay, I'll go to the left. I'm warning you, you're really making me have to tear right now. Jeremy, um, I just decided to call you because you're doing a great job. Keep it going. <laughs> um, but it's actually uh, not going great for me right now, though. The previous phone guy went missing after Wednesday night. I, I can't really tell what happened to him, but I think that that thing had something to do with it. <laughs> Damn it. It even had a sharp pitch knife, too. Uh, but, you see, the actual Mr. Apple character doesn't act aggressive like that at all. I'm starting to realize that this could have been all done by William Afton, but I'm not sure. And, anyways, I'm trying to close this door slowly. <laughs> Oh, oh god, who knows where I am? Good luck on your fourth night, Jeremy Fitzgerald. <laughs>
there, old friend. I've truly missed you so much. It's me, Henry Miller. I've noticed that you've managed to survive the previous nights with the help of Sparky the dog. I'm honestly glad. Nevertheless, nobody could have survived that long if it wasn't for him. However, things are escalating quickly, and your only protection won't be able to last any longer for the next week. The animatronics have gone haywire, to the point they've literally become reanimated corpses of the dead. Some of the areas are no longer accessible for the ISAC security bot now, because something in one of those areas has been tampering with ISAC's lenses. Sparky will be your only protection for this Friday night. However, I'll be able to still help you for the next week. Just make sure to keep the radio close with you at all times. I will explain more to you after the night ends. But, for now, survive the night. I'm counting on you, Jeremy Fitzgerald. Good luck. We're coming for you, William Afton. Mark my words, you bastard. <clears throat> this is a pre-recorded message by Henry Miller. Signing off. <laughs>